Hey there boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today we're back on the 1985 Chevrolet C30 Dually Crew Cab. I don't know what we named this thing yet, but it's it's the Crew Cab or the Dually or the Squared Crew Cab, Squared Dually. Anyway, yesterday Mickelson was over, we were talking business, and he said, we got, I think we're talking about the exhaust on this thing. And he says, why aren't you driving that thing? You know, it's it's towing season. And I'm like, well, it's, it's always towing season for us driving. We're always hauling junk. And I said, that's a good point. It needs a bunch of little things to get this thing on the road so that we can use it. And it's, it's starting to become a shelf. So I was going to set the head for the rollback on here because I didn't know where to set it because I needed the bench over there for doing other stuff. And I was gonna set it in here and I'm like, no, we can't turn this into a bench. We already got it full of T-tops from the, the trans man, Dirt Reynolds, the purple nurple, the purple people eater, the purple petrol eater. So many good names that you guys come up with for that thing. I think, I think right now Dirt Reynolds is my favorite. But anyway, I know he said we're gonna get some projects done this year. Well, of course, you know, first of the year I bought this thing on like the 21st day of the year so we instead of finishing projects we're picking up more projects but we we're we're close we're on the home stretch and this is where I get burned out so we need to power through and get this thing done so we're gonna put it on the hoist and we're gonna address some issues first things first the left rear tire leaks I don't know if it's leaking around the bead or what the airbags leak so we got to get those pumped up uh, I'd like to change the gauge to a dual needle for the air compressor so that it shows both tank pressure and bag pressure. Right now I think I just got it set to bag pressure. Something isn't jiving there with the switch and, and the, I don't know. We've got to address the leak. I want to put a different gauge in it so that's got both those needles so we can tell what the compressor is at because right now I can't. I have no idea what to tell where the compressor is at and the compressor is not turning off. So either I got a bad switch or I screwed up something in the wiring, totally likely. and yeah or we got something screwed up in the compressor or the compressor's not building enough pressure to turn off the switch i don't know we got to find that out and then should put some fittings on there so we can put a air hose on there so we can pump up some tires so you see i got all these totes up here and there for projects well this project's got three flipping totes so it's, it's time to get some parts out of totes and put into this thing so that we can you know put more parts on the shelf so here's the parts we got we got a computer mount that we got to remount we got oil pressure and temp sensor, sending units, exhaust manifold hardware. I don't know why I got that, if we already did that or what, but we need to check into it. Adjustable thermostat, low radiator hose neck, because I don't like the way that that's at. Uh, we got a thermostat for it. We got sill plates. We got a selection of rear view mirrors we need to put on there. I guess we're just going to pick the best one. Gauge bezel. Uh, like I said, we got a bunch of plumbing to do the... Uh, air hose and uh, a dual needle pressure gauge must be a tranny mount uh, bushings for the sway bar and then we got some trim to go underneath the column seat belts all that good stuff so first thing we're going to get that tire off get that patched up because that is because that is a priority because you know how much we hate flat tires right duffel up i guess Good paint. Yeah. Yep. Odds are pretty low that we poked a hole in this tire because hardly has any miles on it. You can tell by the way that the tire is. So really there's two spots it can leak around the valve stem, which is brand new. 
and they're on the bead. So we're gonna take a look at the bead. I'm guessing it's the bead. Bead looks good, Velsen looks good, it's tight, so we're gonna put some bead sealer on there. Hopefully that takes care of our issue. Maybe we'll put some soapy water on there and check it out. We gotta get every last drop out of here, just like Grandpa did in the old country, so. Let's see how this works. Clearly, it is not working, and I am not a tinsmith. Well, this is going well. Said nobody ever. We got some good old Weisses instead of the Master Force from the Maynards. I'm sure some HVAC technicians are just screaming at the uh, screen right now. You're doing it wrong. That's how you learn, right? If I cut myself on this, that would just be the icing on the cake. There we go. Good enough for the girls we go with. Now we can get all the shamu at the very bottom while cutting ourselves in the process. Now we're cooking with gas. Oh yeah. Folgers, good to the last drop. Is that Folgers? That's the fresh part of waking up. Who's good to the last drop? Always good to the last drop. Got our tire schmoo down to the last drop. Okay. We can throw that away now, huh? We can throw it away. Okay. So a little biscuit. Well, hopefully that fixes our leak. We'll let her sit for a couple hours. She's still at 50. So hopefully it's good to go. Hopefully it was just leaking around that bead. No need for soapy water when you're that good, right? Then maybe we'll give her a shot. See if we get any bubble in here and then we'll flip her over to the other side. All right, checks out good. So I think we're gonna slide her on there. Hopefully that fixes that. I freaking hate fixing tires and I hate leaky tires so it should be good to go and I hate doing sheet metal work so we'll put the old Weisses back on the shelf for another rainy day oh we gotta fix some tubes it was a rough weekend for tubes around here wasn't it Duff took three of them out not all on the same tire though All right, first item off the task list. We could have cleaned that hubcap up simulator, but nah. We should find some center caps. Maybe get some custom Duff or Mortsky logos to put on there. Maybe just a nice big Krager decal. Oh man, just think of this thing had dual Kragers. If they made a Krager, we could have six of them on there. Oh, how great would that be? Okay, I apparently huff too much uh, tire sealant. We better go see what's next on the list. Next on the list is to put this oil pressure setting unit on. Apparently there was one on there and I hooked it up because it was already on there and it doesn't read right. So this one come with our classic instruments gauges. So we're gonna hook this guy up. Only problem is this one's got a eyelet ring terminal and the other one's got a spade. So we're gonna have to swap the terminals. Story of my life, but it's right by the oil filter. We'll get that swapped out. Swap a new end on that wire. Everybody's gonna be happy. Oh, she's upside down. So it's lefty, tighty, righty, loosey. I don't know if this was the factory one or what they had going on here. How much oil is gonna come out? You may never know. We're gonna find out shortly, I guess. Oh crap. Definitely 
Should have put a drain pan. You know there's surely a drain pan underneath all that oil that just come out. How dare you! Uh, right, Greta? Right. Sometimes I amaze myself just how dumb of things I do. Make sure to put tape on your pipe threads so that it doesn't leak anymore. Judging by the looks of this thing, she's had a few leaks over the years, so let's try to keep those to a minimum. Let's try to swap this out for a ring terminal. I always make sure your ring terminal fits over your stud before you crimp it on there. Don't ask me how I know. Doesn't that look so much better with black bushings that are new? Yeah, those blue ones, they were hideous. Don't worry, we saved them. We'll put them on the shelf for use at a later day or somebody can buy them on our auction when we die. All the other hot garbage. We're picking stuff off the list. What are we gonna do next? We gonna need this sending unit? It's probably stock GM one. Nope. It'll be there in case this one doesn't work. What's next on the list? Oh, it does have more water than coolant in it, so we should drain some coolant, try this thing, and uh, top off the coolant to get their coolant to uh, water ratio correct. And, oh yeah, we gotta do some plumbing before we got her in the air. We should, apparently I bought a transmission mount because I thought we needed to put that in. So let's take a look at that. Oh yeah. Oh, this one's definitely let loose. She's a little chewy. All right, let's get her swapped out of there. Hopefully this one fits, because the one I got's rectangular and this one's round. Bing bada boom, one new tranny mount. Now that's all nice and clean so we can see if the rear main seal or output shaft seal is leaking on the transfusion, which I'm sure it is. Because why wouldn't it be? These jacks, they're handy as shirt on a pocket. Got our coolant safely draining into a pan so we can reuse it. And we're gonna try putting this adjustable thermostat housing in there so we can adjust it to the direction that we need in adjustable indexable and we're gonna put a snap a thermostat in it the neat part about these LS's is the thermostat has the gasket or the seal on it and you really can't put it in backwards because it just won't go that way it's even indexed how neat is that? How neat is that? Where did we get this thing? The Amazonia? UPRproducts.com 8200-08 LS One and a half inch thermostat housing Got the old one off of there Look at this this guy is getting after it. He's our in-house local bead blaster. You gonna dust the inside too while you're in there? <laughs> you're doing good work. Don't get it, don't get it crooked now. 
<laughs> Dad, shut the door on you. Leave me in there. Oh, well, guy, I hope when I'm 75 years old, I'm crawling in blast cabinets like that. Holy buckets. Just like a big kid over there. All right, ready to slide the new one on, I think. Didn't even make that much of a mess. And there we go. Get rid of that big kink up there. Use a nice formed hose. Now hopefully that don't leak. I've got a terrible track history with aftermarket thermostat housings and leaking, so. And I've never even used an indexable one, so I can about imagine how this is gonna go, but we'll give her a shot. Worst case scenario, we'll just keep the OEM one in the glove box. Now we dump our coolant back in. See if we get any leaks. Cooling system should be full. Now what are we going to do? Let's fix that air leak and put the right gauge in there. Different gauge, whatever. Let's do some plumbing. All right, all we really did down here was we teed in here. This is the main feed or the pump pressurizes the tank and then we put this T in here and then this feeds the valves and this feeds the gauge so we're gonna have a gauge for the system pressure and a gauge for the bag pressure so well one gauge but a needle for each that's really all we did down here was teed in this line right here and we'll go check out the top side look at these hideous red floor mats don't buy Reflective red terrible floor mats off the old Amazonia. Kind of like the white face gauge, and that's just got one needle. This one's got two. Let's see if it works. Somebody doesn't have much faith in me. I would certain. Oh, there you go. See how high she goes. I got this switch upside down, imagine that. So right now we got about 25 in the bags. So now we can see if the bags leak down or if the system leaks down, we can, whatever. You keep vitals on all this stuff. Well, we're creeping up to 180 and it hasn't shut off yet. So I think we either got a bad switch or we wired something incorrectly. I'm guessing we wired something incorrectly. Per usual, turns out I'm the idiot, so I got a pressure switch in there that kicks off at 200 PSI, which is the max working pressure for the compressor, and then it kicks back on when it gets down to 165. So we're gonna put like a, a 150 pressure switch in there so that it kicks off at 150 and then comes back on at like 130, something like that. So my bad, and didn't know what I was doing. So we'll get one of those ordered, and then everything should be good there. And then we're just gonna keep an eye out for some leaks. We got some leaks, we'll address those. If not, Pretty much good to go on that pressure switch. So I made my decision. We're putting the old guide glare proof on there. Oh, it's, it says GM truck right there. Mainly because it says made in USA right there. I never use those. Maybe we'll have to, seeing how this thing sits so low. We shined her up a little bit. She cleaned up pretty good. Good enough for the girls we go with. And for anybody who hasn't put one of these on before, or taken them off, uh, it's usually a set screw, like so. This is a tiny little Allen wrench on this one. And that's how you remove your rear view mirror. And then there's this little tab. It's glued to the windshield. And it, sh oh, you gotta put it on the right way. Slides on there like a so, and then there's some adhesive between that and the windshield. So, 
we're gonna slide this on the tab that's on the windshield hopefully it fits and we'll have ourselves a rear view mirror what a deal i mean we already got the tow mirrors but we'll have tri mirrors now also there's about a four percent chance that this mirror fits the tab that's on this windshield because that's how it goes here goes nothing oh my goodness it even fits what a deal i have no idea where this mirror came from i don't think it came from this pickup i don't think we got one with this pickup probably some old beater in the trees all right there we go adjuster up down whatever good to go she's got a little i don't know delamination going on in the mirror but it kind of matches the the rest of the crappiness we got going on here oh i'm definitely going to cut the wires going to that center speaker because everybody's like no you got to use the power from this side and the power from that side and you're going to pull too much juice off of one frequency or channel or something so i'm just going to cut the wires because i don't need it and uh yeah there's a lot of uh, experts out there on the internet and uh yeah the key was on whoopsies so I am not a stereo expert, so I'm just going to unhook that for now. Because uh, that's what a dual coil, dual voice, something speaker. and yeah, You don't want to overload the left front circuit. You want to have it the same as the right front. So we're just going to nip the wires, carry on with their lives. And everybody can stop yelling at me. It'll just be a void in the dash that I wasted $70 on. Story of my life. All right, pretty excited about this. We got old air products here. We got all the brackets to put the compressor on the LS. We got a condenser. We got the HVAC unit for the inside. We got some hoses and some plumbing and stuff. I've only done a couple of AC installs, but I'm pretty excited about this. Cause it was 95 degrees yesterday. So I think first things first is we're gonna get the old unit out of there. So we get rid of that whistling through the firewall. And we got this block off plate to put in there. So uh, we'll at least resolve that. And uh, hopefully everything goes well, because I really don't know what I'm doing. Pretty much like everything else we do around here. So let's get that old one out of there. Maybe there's some hardware coming through here. Sprayer? Oh yeah, it's spraying season. Rogator. All right, let's get after it. retainer clip up here on this piece of hardware we're gonna use our handy dandy mortski repair magnetic screwdriver get yours at mortski.com that off of there i think that's everything out here looks like there might be some hardware on the inside we got to take off but the previous owner did most of the work for us Yeah, it looks like there's that guy coming from the inside, and that's about it. I'm sure there's some controls and some wiring, but yeah, not much left. Sure enough, just that one self-tapper in there, I had to take his wiring out of the glove box and move that out of the way and tip the glove box down. But I think we gotta modify that later anyway, so our glove box is gonna be pretty much non-existent. The only, or one of the unfortunate things about this kit. Now let's take the controls out. I think we just got these four screws here and then disconnect what's on the back and get this stuff out of here. I don't know how much of the existing stuff, I think there was something about, there's these vents under the dash we need to plug off the foot vents and yeah some adapters going to the defroster you get it i unhooked that speaker just so you know don't comment about me not knowing how to wire stereos well you can because i don't know how to wire them I always use the longest extension you got why because i don't know Look at this menagerie. We got some electrical, some mechanical cables, some vacuum, 
Well, GM, they just used it all. These pickups did have surprisingly good heaters in them, in my humble opinion. And you know, being from Podunk, North Dakota, we definitely used the heaters in these things when I was a kid. Late models still use all this vacuum garbage. I feel like it's all servos now. Man, that is a handy screwdriver. And you just leave it right where you need it, or forget it underneath the hood of something. Whatever works for you. We need to get us some Mordsky pocket tees on the website, and then we can total package. You buy a shirt and a screwdriver, and you put it in your pocket, and boom, you're a mechanic. Nothing can stop you. What is holding you in? Nothing. There we go. One heater control vent out. An AC, HVAC control unit. I'm going to try to wrestle this pig out of here. Oh, of course there's coolant in it leaking on my brand new carpet. Son of a biscuit. Cheese in rice. Put the ugly floor mat underneath it to catch it. Oh yeah, I'll send it onto the computer and onto my tools. Just get out of here. Get out of here. do that before you put your new carpet in. Guess we'll be cleaning that mess up later. So we got our fresh air blocked off over in the kick panel on the passenger side and now we got to put this block off plate on the firewall and then cut this hole through the firewall. I think it's a three inch hole. So we're going to take our super scraper. This is the SS1 model available at Morsky.com and we're going to clean up all the goo and schmoo and poo on the firewall. There's a whole bunch of poo in the heater box and in that fresh air vent so yeah it should make the thing smell a whole lot better by getting rid of that stuff and then uh we're gonna put this up there drill a hole yeah easy peasy lemon squeezy right right you just gotta line up a couple existing holes instructions pretty good so far i mean if i can do it you can do it isn't that what uh what south main auto says yeah he seems like a pretty good guy other than he's got to work on late model garbage which this thing's kind of turning into. All right, let's uh, scrape away.
you just want to play dumb. We got work to do. So we got our panel on the wall. We scraped it all off with our super scraper. Get yours at Mortsky.com. And we got our, our hurricane unit, which is our main HVAC unit, mounted to the mounting plate for that. And we got that all mounted up. We got our lines fished through. And before I did that, I put some uh, fat mat on the firewall, some sound deadener heat insulation stuff. And then when we fish that through, we put our little rubber boot seal around that. Turn the gall dang cyclops on. Oh, somebody left it on. She's dead. Get yourself one of these. Father's Day is coming up. You need to get something for your father. Or uh, you are a father and you want your kids to get you something real good. Tell me you want a cyclops. Now, there should be a link down in the video description for the Amazon. I think they're like, uh, last I checked, like 35 37 bucks. Well worth it. But we got the boot on there, so yeah, we're just plugging away here. We're getting there. I think we got to do our controls and a little uh, wiring probably on the inside, and then we got to do our heater hoses and our AC lines. We'll get there, though. I'm going to go charge this up so it's good to go for next time. Next, the instructions tell us to put our expansion valve on and lube up the O-ring. You always want to lube up your rubber. And then we had to uh, put the sensor on here, wrap it with, uh, there's some C-clip, and then we got to wrap it with this thermal tape. So that's ready to go. And now we got to put our controls in the dash and our wire harness. So we got to figure out this guy. I'm guessing this valve is going to be under the hood. Yeah. Who knows how this all works. Hopefully it just plugs into the factory connectors and make life real easy. Got our controls in. All the wires are pretty much plug and play. Got a ground we had to hook up over here, so we attached that to the body with a nice serrated washer, is that what we call them? Star washer, so we get a good ground. Same thing over there. So the ground over there, ground over here. And then we had to fish a couple wires through the firewall for the AC compressor and for the heater valve. And we had to hook up a couple wires on this thermostat for the intake grill. We got to figure out where this sensor for the thermostat goes. I'm guessing it goes inside of the heater box. Everything's, yeah, pretty much straightforward plug and play. And then we plugged into the fuse panel. There's a key power and an ignition or a ignition power and a battery power. So we found those and put a couple spade clips on those wires, pushed them into the fuse relay center. So wiring. Pretty straightforward. I didn't show it because it's easy. And then, yeah, you gotta screw that to the dash. And now we're getting we're getting closer. Uh, we got a there's some adapters to hook up the defrost and all the vents and that goodness. Some of this stuff was already out of here, so before we bought it, so that might be interesting I'm trying to figure that out. But Old Air Products gave us these uh, nice adapters, so. They should just clip onto the uh, factory stuff, and then we just hook onto that. I think this is the plate for the club box, maybe? Anyway, oh, and these are the, the flexi hoses. The only space that flexi hoses are acceptable is on your defroster heater, not on your radiator or your exhaust. So we're going to put those in there, and we'll be on our way. Duff, you ready for some AC? See if we can see from these pictures, but that's the dash pad. Since we don't have a dash pad, we gotta get one. We got a dash pad, but we gotta have this insert. I think I brought one here. I dug through my stash, and I can't figure it all out. There's supposed to be a vent that goes right there, and then this band is supposed to go into the dash pad, and there's supposed to be a vent over here, but you know, in storing this thing, I busted it. And I don't really like that this one's got the glow plug light slash check engine light, which actually would be kind of handy to hook up the check engine light. But anyway, the boys over at 7th Avenue hooked us up with this thing. This is the one that I had to dig a tunnel down to get in the door to get the steering column out. So that was fun. Well, there it is. Next to the uh, Suzu squish nose, you can see the bumper and headlight trim. That's it. It's under a lot of snow. This should be fun. You've been a lot of help, pal. Got it. Boy, I'm gonna be pissed if it isn't in here. Whew. Whew. 
Well, hey, pal. How's it going up there? Getting her in here with a steering column missing. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and take this thing apart and maybe steal this bezel and this vent. And then we'll take the dash pad off and get these vents out of there. And it is super hot in there. And of course, it had a flat tire. So we're gonna fix that up because we hate flat tires, don't we, Duff? This thing was perfectly equipped. Power locks and manual windows, the way it should be. And I'm even all right with no power windows. I suppose we could always take the guts out of these and put in that thing, but anywho, I don't know that I've ever pulled a dash pad out of a square body. So this should be real fun. Also, we can get that vent and that vent and that vent. All right, are you gonna help? Yeah, that's what I thought. Moto's over here doing Model A things. We took on some customer work, a little bit of steering and electrical on it. No video on that one, maybe. You uh, just want me to hand you tools? Or are you gonna hand me tools? Wouldn't that be great? Oh, look at that wing window latch. Real nice. It really wasn't that bad. I had to take the bezel out to get the bezel out anyway, but that was already half out. There's a couple of screws down here, and then it just kind of slides in these slots. Look at all that change we got up there. That's gonna pay for this project right there. What a deal. Got your pay for the day right there, Mojo. Huh? I got your pay for the day right there. Okay. Yeah, you can see these are the tabs that you gotta slide in there. One, two, three, four, five of them. And then there's some screws. One, two, three, four there. And then one on the end. I don't see one on the driver's side. Just a couple of the bezel screws must have held her in place. We can see here's our two vents. We got to take all these nuts off here to get that band off of there. And then that'll give us our vents. And she's a Silverado and hopefully it ain't busted. And then we got our bezel out, but our bezel's been cut up for a CD player. So here's the one that we got. Here's the one we took out. She's pretty butchered up but it's got the vent we need even though it's again kind of busted up it's better than nothing right Duff? right and then of course if you've got a non-ac vehicle it's going to be different it's not going to have that vent there or there but they knew that right Duff? all right let's take those nuts off there and get some ac she's getting warm out and then while we were in there we got our antennae connector it's, it's like a button off a nine volt battery I think it was cut on that pickup or missing or something but it'll be nice to have the fm radio sometimes you gotta listen to the weather or am i guess if you're into the talk show stuff I think our dash pad's ready to slide in. We stole these clips off the old dash pad. We got the vents and this band from the old dash pad. I took that center speaker out and then I slid the uh, antennae wire from this thing into there so we can listen to the FMs. And then we got these adapters that go from the big round to the small round and the oval, oval to rectangular that came with this guy, of course, I snapped off a stud there and a stud there and a stud down there. So, oh, well, uh, the trick with these things is you got to turn them a quarter turn. It took us way too long to figure that out. I had some spectators at that point. One of them was Chin. He's taking a lot of these things out. But anyway, I'm ready to slide this dash pad in, I think. And then we'll hook up some hoses to those guys. Hopefully we can get some access underneath. We're getting that much closer. Duff's out hunting mices. He caught us one today, so he's uh, not partaking in these activities. All right, interrupt your uh, regular scheduled programming to go for an RIDE. That's right, we're in the tow peg again. 
one of my buddies said, yeah, I just picked up this property. There's a two-wheel drive Dodge Dakota on it. He says, if you want it, it's yours. So, free vehicle, only got to go 20 miles round trip. Okay, 25, Duff says, but anyway, let's go check this thing out, see what it is. He says there's no keys, so that might make life interesting, but what the heck. We're always up for a challenge, aren't we? Yeah, we like junk, especially free junk. Also, two-wheel drive Dakotas, if they're the right years, make for a uh, good front end swap. Kind of like we got in that uh, Chops 49 Ford F1 that we haven't driven yet. We need to get this crew cab done so we can work on that. Alright, let's see what it looks like when we get there. Right, Duff? Yeah. Quite the uh, property here, huh, Duff? Well, there it is. Doesn't look like we can load it up forward because of the uh, clothesline. They're kind of a thing of the past, eh? Conserving energy, drying your clothes via the sun. Oh, she's a sport mode. V6, white letters out with a top or a long box. I was hoping it was an earlier one, but the price is right. No rust, though. All right. Get her to load it up. Go from there. Alaska license plates. What a deal. This thing made a trip down here. Oh, duh. Wood tick haven. You go get all the wood ticks. I guess I'll get us a Dakota. Well, that didn't take long, seven minutes and 12 seconds according to the camera. I already pulled this guy out of my hair. Also, try the new Bush Light Peach. It's pretty delicious. I'm gonna dispose of this thing in the proper way and tie this down and get the French out of here before we get any more. Moral of the story is, till bed trailers, big winches. You make things happen real quick. Repo man style. Alaska, she's so cooked you can't even. 13, 10 years. Duff is getting right up inside of this thing. What do they get out of that silly six log pattern? Look at that. Paint on the frame rails. She's a little baked off. I wonder what year this thing is. She's a V6 Magnum machine. So they had pretty new tires when they parked it. Did we bring a critter home with us? Is there anything in there? No? He said the doors are locked and it's got a manual. He's correct on the doors being locked. Sure enough, manual, bucket seats, and a carpeted dash pad. Well, let's drag her off the trailer and stash it away for a rainy day. Good year for Terra's all the way around, match tires. What a deal. Somebody's probably looking for that body match bumper. Ooh, all the lichens. This would make a great pressure washing video. Good thing we got other stuff to do so we don't have to worry about that, huh Duff? Yeah. Oh dang it, I can't believe how nice that frame is on that thing. Duff's like, yeah, looks good. Silly pup. Silly pup. All right, we got work to do. We gonna do a video on a Slim Jim, how to get this door open? I like how you put your foot right in the steak pocket. Everything's pretty much wrapped up inside. Well, we got a little bit of finish work. The dash pad doesn't fit amazing, but Looks pretty good from here. Got to do the glove box, tidy up some wiring. Got to finish the uh, panel underneath the steering column. But all the vents are hooked up, heater controls are hooked up. The fan works, I didn't check anything else because not much else to check. We're getting there though, duh. Now we're going to do the heater hoses and the heater control valve. This guy here. Unfortunately, these are all 5 ace hose and 
those are five ace hose but the gm runs a five ace and a three quarter one for the pressure and one for the return so we're either gonna have to try to slip a five ace hose over a three quarter there or we're gonna have to put a little bushing on here one way or another i think i'll be able to slide a five ace over that but gm things as long as you use all gm parts keeping your gm all gm it's not a big deal but we'll figure it out again i wish this kit had a you know since it's designed for a square body had a three quarter and a five ace and then i wish this silly valve was in the cab so you didn't have to find a spot to mount it under the hood and there's really no good way to mount this thing unfortunately so yeah i wish they had like a bracket something or other anywho we're gonna try to not leak too much coolant out it's a shame we just put that on there and we had the coolant drain but oh well we're getting good at it and then we gotta mount our compressor and condenser and do all our lines for the ac this is a a big undertaking you could probably bang it out in a weekend if you know what you're doing but we don't know what we're doing so all right let's get after it Heater valve is in place. Uh, you can see that five ace holes on a three quarter fitting. It actually doesn't look that terrible, but not ideal. I'd like to find a way to somehow secure this. But like I said, there's no real good way to do it. So we might have to fabricate something or probably just leave it like that forever and it'll be fine. So now we just gotta do the compressor oh man i never even thought of that mojo built this nice bracket you can tell because it says mojo craft on it get your mojo craft sticker at mortski.com uh when we put our compressor on wherever that ends up we might have to relocate the air intake but we got to do the compressor and the bracket and the belt all that and then uh, the corresponding Condenser up here. I think we got to take this ugly grill out. So maybe we'll get a stock style grill installed at this time and All of our associated plumbing and then charge it So we're on the home stretch. So I think what I'm gonna do now is pull that grill out and then we'll get the uh, Condenser mounted somehow. I don't see anything in the instructions on how to do that. So I guess they just leave it up to us So we'll go from there So here's where things get complicated. We gotta sneak our condenser and dryer in here where they are in the stock location. But this guy that I got this thing from, previous owner, he was gonna do turbo things. So he was gonna have an intercooler up here. So he cut this out and then he put this, I don't know, inch and a half by three tubing up here for some reason. So we gotta cut that out. I'm guessing that was for mounting his intercooler, but Anyway, it looks like it's just barely tacked back there. Okay, that's uh, actually welded pretty well. 
So that's gonna be great. And then up here, that's now our tranny cooler. I think it was an engine cooler originally, but she's welded up there as well. This side will be easy to cut out. This side's gonna be a little more difficult. So we gotta get that out of the way because it's taking up valuable real estate. So I'm gonna cut that out. And I'm not gonna show it because it's just me with a cutoff wheel getting real angry. So see you in a little bit. Hopefully with a lot more room for a condenser. Well, we got the old boost caboose bracket out of there. We'll let her cool down and hopefully the mounting tabs for the condenser are still in there and not whacked out of there. That's hot. Don't put your nose on it, goof. All right, let's have a sandwich, let her cool down and come back in a little bit. Maybe I'll fix some tires on that free OBS GMC Sierra that Land Shark Garage dropped off. Go check him out. Um, 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 um. We'll give him a shout out for giving us a free OBS with no drivetrain. But he did leave the white letters out on these sweet freaking Hoosier race car tires that are on here. And these ones are flat. Look at those Euro taillights. Whew. Old Starlight Motors in Aberdeen. Yeah, I don't know that I would stand under their duff. And he took the seat, dang it. All the good stuff. I know. Beggars can't be choosers. Check them out. Landshark Garage on the YouTube. give them an update so there's some rubber wells nuts they call them up top here the mount the condenser they're kind of tricky to get in there and get started so we got those four in instead of four bolts mounting this thing there's eight so there's four quarter inch allen bolts on the bottom and then we had to these adapters hoses lines whatever and then this uh, bracket and grommets on there as well so I think we're pretty much wrapped up up here. We can put our radiator sport back in place. It would have been a lot easier to not have the radiator in it, but and I don't think you would have had to take the grill out. Well, maybe you would have to get those nuts on there. Mm, you could get them from the bottom. But I wanted to get that grill out of there. The destruction said to take the grill out. So now I guess uh, yeah, we just got to do the compressor, which unfortunately I think we're going to have to remake the Mojo Craft bracket over here but okay let's get after it get a compressor on there so of course this is designed for 105 amp alternator and we got the 130 amp alternator so we're gonna have to get a different belt or idler or something else we got our air intake out of the way we're gonna remove the bracket and i think we gotta take the belt off and the tensioner and then we gotta put everything together we got our, I think these are a Sandin style compressor. It probably says SNA. Maybe the S stands for Sandin. I don't know. I call them Sandin style. And then we got our binary switch we got to wire in. We got our belt. We got a bunch of hardware. We got a new tensioner. And we got a front and rear bracket. Ooh, nice laser cut stuff. We should probably be uh, painting those, but we'll see. We got better things to do. Right, Duff? Right. All right, let's get after it. Ooh, and a bunch of spacers of different heights. One, two, three, four different thickness spacers. This will be interesting. Metric hardware, I'm sure. Yep, sure enough, you can tell because it says 8.8. .8. That means it's out of a Ford Explorer, I believe. No, he's out. 
cannot hang. Alright, the compressor installation went really well. Nice hardware, right length hardware, pretty good instructions. The pictures were not amazing, but pretty dang good. So, yeah, I like how they go from a crappy little bullet connector to a nice GM weather pack. Like, can we just use the GM weather pack? So, maybe we will uh, get that doctored up because, yeah. Their harness has the bullet connector too, which I would much rather have the weather pack. And then you get rid of one connection in the middle. But that's besides the point. I think we're getting to the point where we just gotta run some these lines over here. And we gotta put a pressure switch in somewhere. I think that's in the line. Anyway, we gotta go grab a different tensioner. Hopefully, our air intake will still clear. We might have to just raise her up a bit and then we'll bring a bracket off of these brackets. Now, of course, we're not going to paint those because they're going to be hidden and it's a nasty, ugly truck LS. So let them get rusty and match the rest of it. But we're going to go over to the old Napa. They claim that they got a smaller idler on hand that they say we need. And by they, I mean old air says that we need a smaller idler in order to run the belt that comes with the setup. Uh, one other thing is this is a six groove setup and this is a seven groove pulley so we run on the back six grooves we don't leave the we don't use the front groove so worthless information for you but then we can use their belt and then we can keep our alternator because the other option would be to see if i got a smaller alternator in my stash but we might as well have the bigger alternator since we now have air which isn't going to take much electricity but we got our bumping stereo and let's be honest we got power windows and power locks we ain't got much electrical juices flowing so we could go with a smaller one but might as well have the extra capacity no electric fan oh we do have an electric fuel pump though but anywho i'm gonna go to napa road trip with duff and we're gonna grab ourselves a daco 89007 smaller idler and it better be the right one both from napa and for what they suggest I hope so. This kit's been pretty good so far, so let's keep it that way. All right, just got back from our road trip with Duff in the old 71 F100 to Napa. And you can see, I don't know, what's this thing? She's maybe three quarters of an inch smaller in diameter. So now we gotta steal the hardware and the spacer off of this guy and uh, put this on there. It's part number 38006, that's a Gates part number, but also Napa part number. She's made in Kanakistan, so should be the good stuff, right? You can see just how much this thing has sat. It's got all that rust on there. Ooh, she's pitted up pretty good. All right, let's get her on there. Get a belt on this thing so we can have some, well, I don't know if we're gonna have AC right away, but we'll at least be able to drive it again. Holy buckets, she fits. It's really tight. The belt fits tight, and then it's close to the bolt head on the uh, tensioner they sent. And then uh, the radiator hose is kind of hanging down in it. So I'm gonna put another P-clamp on this radiator hold down to hold the top radiator hose up in place so that we don't have to put a new radiator hose on it. And 
possibly throw the belt. And it's always a good thing to write in the glove box what belt, you know, if it's a non-stock application, like if it was just a standard 6.0 belt like we had on before, not a big deal, you just look up 03 Chevy. But because of our different belt routing situation here with added AC and all that, it's always good to record what it is. Speaking of that, I don't have to record it because I can always just look back through this video if I ever need to fix this on Saturday. But it's a Daco 6PK2830 or a 506-1115. So, or just cut that off and stick it in your glove box, whatever. Because inevitably, if you drive it enough, Sooner or later, you're gonna need a belt. So, plan ahead. I'm gonna put another P-clip like this on this shroud up here. I kinda didn't like the way this thing hung down anyway. But yeah, now it's getting awfully close to that belt down there. So, we're gonna tie her up like that. And it shouldn't be a problem, provided our air intake clears. So, we're gonna have to do a little figuring, but I think we'll be all right. We'll get it, we'll get her fingered out one way or another. The other thing the air intake might interfere with is the hoses. And that's pretty much the last thing we got to do on here. So let's get those kind of laid out where they got to go. I already marked them for which one goes from the condenser to the evaporator and the evaporator to the pump and the pump to the condenser. So yeah, I got a handy little kit here. I don't know where I got it, Amazon. It's some offshore, something or other, but it works for what we need to do. The 1500 Hydra crimp. So it's just got all these different dies. And similar to my brake flaring tool, it's just got a cylinder that compresses here. So you open this up, put the dies in there, put your fitting in there, pin it, close the valve, pump it up, squishes them together. Pretty simple setup. Other than this thing and a hole saw, there isn't a lot of specialty tools that we've really needed here. So and even if you do all this install yourself, you can probably find a shop local to you that does the AC. And a lot of people don't have the capability of charging anyway, so you uh, can do all the layout here. You can even cut your lines, put the ends on there, and then just take it to a shop, have them do the crimps, and have them charge it for you. Because you got to pull a vacuum, and we won't go through all that process because I don't know much about it. And I'm, I'm, I know just enough to be dangerous, but we'll uh, we'll gi we'll give her a give her a whirl here. So yeah. This tool is pretty handy if you're doing a bunch of AC installs. Like I said, I've only done two AC installs before, so this thing doesn't get used a lot. But basically, one trip to the shop or two trips to the shop pretty much pays for this thing. I don't remember what I paid for it. A couple hundred bucks, so I can't imagine they charge that much. But if they charge hourly and it's hundred bucks an hour and takes them an hour, so that half paid for it right there. So I'm going to get these all laid out, get them cut to length, put the ends on it, and do some crimping. Hopefully don't screw it up so we have to get uh, new hoses. Yeah. So they gave me these hoses. There's three different sizes. So that's why it's easy to figure out where they go. But they already got 90s on this end. And then this one with our binary switch, which if you don't know what a binary switch is, I'd explain it to you. But I think it does, was it high and low pressure or low pressure? And anyway, binary means it does two things. Can't remember what it is. But we got to wire that up and that basically tells the compressor not to click or not to tells the clutch not to kick in if the system is over pressure or under pressure so if you're out of freon it's gonna not run so we gotta wire that in and that's what the uh, bullet connectors are for all right i'm gonna get these all figured out and yeah then it's sandwich time it is getting warm out oh yeah the neighbors are spraying you can see the dusty trail and they got the well, they also use these box trailers and they got the uh, water and the chemical and all that and they haul it back and forth to the sprayers. It's spray season. That and everybody's hauling corn to town. So the semis are just flying by nonstop. Hey, look at that. The telehandler hasn't even settled down. That's a pretty expensive jack, but she's pretty handy. Here we are. Today's episode of how not to get into a car. Hold on, hold on. You got, you got big easy there, huh? Oh, yeah. it's, the, it's the big easy I used to date one of them 
Yeah, I can get into this one. I haven't done this one yet. You can also do it with an axe handle. Like you're gonna hit her from the backside. That's how Big Easy likes it. And you you slide in the the CAC pump. The easy, the easy wedge. Everything's so easy about it. I don't know why more people aren't breaking into cars. I think needs a pressure gauge. And then we just hook it up to the... It's probably all whacked out because I don't use it very often. Hook it up to the old, old uh, Milwaukee and really uh, get in there nice and deep like. That's it, boy. Get in there nice and deep like. How many miles do you think are on this thing? It is ridiculously clean underneath. I bet she's got 80,000 miles. She ain't got 100 rounds on it. Oh, look at this. Took me seven minutes and 12 seconds to load it. We should have timed this, see how long it takes you to get the door open. Oh. You're at a minute 19 right now. Oh God, you win. Boom. <laughs> so easy, even the chin can do it. Oh, it's Ro the sunshine. What? Sunshine. Sunshine. No way. No way. <laughs> we are going to go put that on somebody's car. I've never owned a club before. I say we can beat those thieves with a club. A club, officer? The club. It's the, it's the originator, too. Winter International Airport. Oh, so good. So good. He should, should have put that on the steering wheel. Thankfully, he didn't. Oh, we got to put a battery in it to see how many mileages it's got. All sunshine. Makes sense with the color of this thing. Got a Sergeant County Bank. Pink pen in it. Looks like somebody took the console out. Tire iron. Is this some, some Tomcat? Oh, yeah. Tomcat. And it's... And it's empty, so apparently... Oh yeah, the mice have chewed the plastic off inside of it. They it were so, so hungry. It was so good. Uh, what are these, the mirror block off plates? Oh, those go on the ends of the dash. Milner clothing. I'm guessing that's... Maybe we'll have to get some Mortsky tape measures. Look at those little slip on oh, it's... oh, she's she's sticky. Is it metric on the other side? Oh yeah. Nothing but the finest. They fit, they fit well in your pocket. You got room in your pocket for more. You ever like tear out the threads on your pocket because you get too much crap in there? Yeah, I stitched it back up though. <laughs> Fixed it though. Passenger airbag. Oh, dang it. He, he or she was a smoker. Ooh, that's a lot of fecal matter. Oh, it's got a limited slip. And 355 rears. That's a good rear end. Oh, that is another one of Tomcat. Wow. It didn't work very well because there's a lot of mousages. Is, 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 is. is this too? Uh... Well, that's the park brake. There's the hood. Dang it, we should have brought a battery to see how many miles are on it. Yeah. Did they come with a 360 in these or just the 5.2s? I think just the 318. My buddy had one in high school. He did a lot of sick burnouts with that thing. Oh, it does sick burnouts? Did he have a manual? A manual transmission? An automatic extended cab. Black on black. She's a 99 model year. Well, at least the critters didn't chew all the wires off or the belts. Oh, clutch fan, so you can't see if it turns over. You got a, a, a kit for... A, fitting keys in the ignition of this thing too dang it all right come with a bunch of cans looks like some tongue and groove engineered hardwood boards maybe the keys for the top are in there oh you got a wasp nest all right there you have it how to break into a dodge dakota in a minute and 19 seconds new township record the champion With all this money you're making for opening cars maybe you could buy yourself some new vans These are talking, man. <laughs> they're just getting broke in well i guess we don't have to name it it's already named sunshine 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 sunshine, sunshine. sunshine. Yeah. <laughs> <it> up, huh? <laughs> that's cool i can dig since that didn't take very long let's go over our other free vehicle we got here i don't know what year is this thing 
90 to 92 probably 89 to 92 chin's gonna find out shout out to land shark garage for donating this thing to us we're gonna go through it Ooh, sony cd player with the adapter kit 92 model. she's a 92 look at this look at all this good stuff oh dewalt bag urson chrome big block valve covers with gaskets screw buddy oh yeah he's he's working on the screw cap go check him out land shark garage he's working on some cool stuff we gotta see what we got in here points distributor rear end clamp for race car things one wire napa alternator Whew, you know that's good what kind of spring bracket? lift kit thing is this Ooh, alternator bracket those are always good property more race car valve covers round round. you spin me round, baby right round Put that in there. napa fender cover that's a score washer jet bucket oh that's a crappy buell buick Olds pontiac right it's got the fuel inlet at the front lots of bracketry in this box what do you do with a fire hose does he make like making a rope out of it or did he use it for like insulation we may never know He's, he took the good seat out of here and left us the headrests okay, and then is that for a tbi i suppose i would say so remind me not to bolt that directly on an engine without emptying the acorns thanks for putting the hardware in there nepathod what's in the what's in the box that's taped up Ooh, gorilla tape even body lift pups and bolts I'm guessing. oh he did say it. why does it say that on there <laughs> He did say something about a three-inch body lift, and I'm like, mmm, thanks for that. Mud truck thing. But wait, there's more. Oh, it's even the short tunnel cover for the toolbox. Aluminum factory radiator. Leaf springs. Beauty ring, air cleaner, drive shaft, TBI. We might need that someday. I don't know why, but... You need a sprinkler? That's a turbo heart. How's the grass grow? It's what do you mean it had a tunnel cover? It's still right here. Oh. U bolts. We can always use U bolts and hardware. Now we just need one more strap. A Dakota? No. S10. Of course. Of course it's S10. Some lumber. Drive shafts. Oh yeah. He loved the S10s. Oh! Land shark, more junk. Oh. Rosedale Chevrolet. Radiator hoses, not of the flexi assortment. I suppose I should see the exhaust now. Huh. Newer studs and hardware. Would you believe it? I found the 10 millimeter back here. It's not really a 10, is it? Oh, it's one of the cheapest of the cheap Taiwan 10 millimeters. What a deal. Oh, we still need to find the uh, the strap and bolt for the rear end. There it is, right there, underneath the jack. Right by the, the strap. It's, oh, and one bolt, we're still, we're just down two bolts now. Ooh, 96 S10 springs, that's what they're for. Pulse. I really should make a rack and start putting these springs on. I don't know why. But wonder if they'll fit in a 79 Tata -ta 10th anniversary Trans Am. Go check out Landshark Garage. Watch him put an electric jack on a camper and get 96 views in four days. He didn't even get one view per hour. But he's trying. And shout out to Mrs. Landshark for editing that stuff. And that concludes our episode of free junk that people deliver and or we go get. Stay tuned for more free stuff and people keep giving us free stuff. But we're kind of running out of room here. We gotta get back to work. We gotta put this stuff away. Or don't. Whatever. Where did you find the mud at, you dirty dog? I ended up rotating the compressor 90 degrees. This is a Sandin SD5 compressor and they said this is the oil plug and you can mount that oil plug 90 degrees either direction. So should be fine. If not, I guess we're going to have to buy a new compressor and uh, make some new lines. But got them all routed. 
they're not tight, but you know, a nice big loop is nice for some movement because that engine is going to vibrate a little bit. But this was the best way to get a straight shot. And we, we took the uh, filler neck off this engine because that was in the way originally, but now it would uh, probably be all right. But I kind of like the clean look and not having that big ugly filler neck. You can see I marked these lines in two spots because when you've got a 90 like this, if you just crimp it on randomly, it might not be oriented the right way. Not such a big deal on this line, but like this line with the fitting over here for our binary pressure switch, uh, it's gonna make a difference. It really makes a difference when you got a 90 degree on each end. They're not gonna be clocked correctly. So, all right, let's uh, crimp those on there. I wish I had some extra fittings to do some practice on, but we should be all right. We're just gonna wing it. Getting there, the home stretch. Here goes nothing, Duff. Hopefully we don't screw it up. Odds are we probably will. That don't look so bad. A little hairy right there, but again, we're dealing with a $200 tool versus a $2,000 tool that these guys probably use. Looks like I got my crimp a little bit far back. Maybe we'll crimp the next one further ahead. Good news is that crimp is hidden. So now we gotta switch out our dies because they're all different sizes. All right, get a lube up and install our O-rings on there. You always wanna lube your rubbers first so they don't tear, cause that ain't no good. Then you get a leak. Leaks lead to bad things. Right, Duff? Oh man, he's been working hard at rolling in the swamp today. All right, let's get this thing wrapped up. Here's the frustrating part. Got everything hooked up. We got our binary switch wired in. We got our compressor wired in. Got our little vacuum pump here. We hook up to the air hose. Yeah, that's right. We take air pressure and turn it into vacuum. And we suck the vacuum down on this guy. Have a sandwich, come back. And we don't have a vacuum. I found one O-ring that I had missing but check the other other connection they all seem tight it could be my crimps i could have pinched an o-ring i don't know so i think what we're going to do is we're going to take it to uh, the diesel shop in town uh, they're going to charge it with hopefully nitrogen that's that's what they do you can't charge it with you can charge it with shop air and and find your leaks but then you're contaminating the system you want to have something clean like nitrogen i don't have nitrogen on here so that's probably what we'll have them do is charge it with nitrogen. See if we can find the leak. If it's got a bad crimp, they have the capability of making new ends or new hoses or, or whatever. So I, I really don't know what it is. Hopefully it's just an O-ring, but uh, it's beyond our capabilities right now. So see if we can't get something set up there. And uh, it sucks. It really sucks. Finding leaks sucks, fixing leaks sucks, but when you don't have a way to do it, because everything's new in this system. Uh, the compressor, the condenser, and the evaporator, 
all came with a vacuum in them. So when you take the plugs off, like you know that they weren't damaged in shipping. So it's, it's unless I damage something installing it, it's probably at one of my connections. So it is what it is. So I guess that's gonna wrap this up. We still have to charge it, but we gotta find the leak. Obviously we're not gonna dump a bunch of R134 Freon in it before we charge it, cause that would be silly. That would be ruining the environment, Greta. And she would not be happy about that. How dare you? So yeah, we do have some new lug nuts. Uh, these guys are out of the Twin Cities, Minneapolis, St. Paul area. Let me see if I can find their name. Custom Wheel Specialists in St. Paul, Minnesota. They reached out to me. They said, hey, our guys, when they're packing orders in the back, they got uh, YouTube on in the background and they heard me talking about lug nuts and they're like, hey, can we work with you? And I said, absolutely. So we got some new lug nuts for this thing. So since we got it on the hoist, let's run her up in the air. And let's put some new lug nuts on uh, via the Custom Wheel Specialist. So thanks Custom Wheel Specialist for being our lug nut sponsor this week. That is awesome. Cause we're sticklers for lug nuts, aren't we Duff? It's like you get dirtier as the day goes on. And these things are getting super rusty. So some new lug nuts. We'll clean that up. And it'll make me feel so much better about the whole AC situation. Ugh. And today's getting hot and nasty and gross too, so. Just wanted to drive around in AC with a stinky dog. Look at these bad boys. Nice shiny chrome acorn style. 9 16th thread. Super similar to what we got on there. Only a whole lot shinier, so. Let's get these things swapped on there. Oh man, those things look real nice. They're super good on the back because this is all stainless where those front caps are. Apparently chromed, so maybe we can. Nah, I think they're too far gone. If you take some steel wool, sometimes that will clean up a little bit, but I think she's uh, too far gone. So let's we'll see if we can find some different ones of those. Long term, it'd be cool to get some 19.5s or some 22.5s on there, but these are going to work for now. Also, I got a new pressure switch. How many PSIs is this guy? On at 90 and off at 120. So let's put that on there while we got her up in the air. a vacuum down and I think it's my gauges that were showing me how to leak so charge her up and see what happens you know what you're doing Would you look at that we got her outside and ready to do work i think we got to make a different hitch to raise it up a little bit higher and that way we can have like an adjustable receiver style drop hitch and then you can take the ball out when you ain't using it stuff like that so it's on the list but i'm sure these giant bumpers have pulled a gazillion miles over the years and it should be just fine we got a roll 20 foot h and h tilt bed on it had to do a little wiring on the winch because over the winter wiring did fare so well so we need to order some parts for the old xrc 12 winch get that doctored up get this thing back in action because our other trailer is, is full right now and this trailer sits higher and it's heavier and i kind of like the old one i like the new one but the old ones it's all reliable she's rough around the edges just like us threw some tools in the back mainly just stuff to uh tie a car down chains straps an extra battery for the winch did bring a jack and a handful of tools up in the uh, tool bag dewalt pudding style Gus loaded up ac's cranked Ugh. we need to fix the steering wheel because it's off kilter and 
we need to get cruise control. We got a few things to wrap up, but let's go see if we can haul something with this hot rod. Dude. Cowboy Cadillac. What do you think, Duff? You like the AC? Oh yeah, it feels real good when it's 95 out. Oh, we made her super cool. I forgot to bring my air tank, so super cool is gonna lend us his ginormous air tank. And we're gonna snag us a 34 to 36 international half ton short bit pickup. Buggy one. I'm gonna crank up the AC and head her for the hills. What do you think, Duff? You got to play around with Arrow and somebody. I don't know, a little corgi and some other farm dog, farm dog, cattle dog. Run around. Get, get you home. Get some water. All right, AC is coming on. Ah, uh, we're pretty good. Super cool, and I agree that the uh, we need to do something about the hitch situation. She hangs. A bit too low and of course we had to pump up the tires on this we had to drag his air compressor out because i forgot my 18 volt milwaukee and if i had just brought my stinking air hose with we could have just pumped him up from the compressor on this thing definitely was not thinking there all right fuel gauge is not moving so either it doesn't work or this thing gets really good gas mileage or maybe it's hooked up to the other tank and that one's full you're slobbering all over me We don't lose anything. Strap the doors shut. There's uh, extra hoods and cowl on the back and strap them shut. She barks pretty good, don't she, Duff? What do you think, Duff? Made her home. No issues. Definitely got to get a receiver hitch that's higher. And yeah, it rides a little rough. You know, it's lowered. And maybe part of that is because we got these smaller tires on the front but ac works good we gotta get the cruise working gotta tidy up a few things gotta clock the steering wheel but i tell you what that bench in the shop that was all covered with parts uh we gotta put the glove box door on i think that's laying on there and that's about it we pretty much wiped all that out we got all kinds of parts on this thing got the doors lashing good to the old pvc trick on the strikers I like to find uh 88 to 94 Bench seat to match the front to put in the back. A couple other odds and ends, you know, little piddly stuff. I think I need to take the dash out. We bumped the wires for the speaker wires when we were messing around with the uh, chicken chasers and got to move the speakers down so they'll clear the dash pad. Just little stuff that just absolutely kills me. But And that's kind of where this pickup was sitting. But guess what? We got the T-tops out of the Trans Merrill Bird out of the back. We got a trailer hooked on this thing and we did some towing. Uh, fuel gauge isn't working. I stopped in town because I'm like, this thing should not be full yet. Sure enough, it took 11 gallons, and that's like a 20 gallon tank, so it should have said half, but it didn't. So we got bugs to work out, but that's what you got to do. You got to get out and you got to drive these things. You got to experience life. You got to deal with the difficulties of forgetting your air tank and forgetting your air hose and figuring out why your fuel gauge don't work and why uh, your airbags leak and all that good stuff. Um, Anybody can just go to the dealership, buy a brand new pickup. Good for you. We took a 1985 Chevrolet C30 Dually. We slammed it on the ground. Somebody already LS swapped it. We buttoned it up. And we got this thing. This thing's way cooler to pull up in the yard to buy somebody's junk that they're not going to work on than, uh, than White Ryan here. I like White Ryan, but this thing's just so much cooler. You just feel that much cooler driving it. And as my buddy uh, Randy in watertown says costs a lot of money to look this cool and there's a lot of truth to that because uh we're not a ton of money in this thing but we have gobs and gobs of time and time equals money so if you want to just figure out the equation it is what it is but anyway i think that's where we're going to wrap it up we got the cowboy cadillac on the road we got a trailer hooked to it and that's what i wanted to do like dualies are cool but it's even cooler when you're pulling a trailer with a dually and uh yeah we did it
we got a little bit of work to do it's gonna be even better but thank you very much for watching check out other videos go get that great mordski merch at mordski.com we're working on some new stuff you guys have been absolutely killing it supporting us by buying decals and screwdrivers and air fresheners and shirts and uh we're just gonna keep getting bigger and uh this is just tip of the iceberg we're gonna make this thing better we're gonna do more projects you know we got to get on that 63 impala and we got to get on that 49 ford f1 we got that 53 ford cab over back there on a chevrolet chassis we got ourselves a 63 pontiac grand prix we got a 60 cadillac we got a 65 buick riviera we got all kinds of projects maybe even like a 47 to 53 chevy advanced design with you know maybe some uh, 79 trans am underpinnings and an ls who knows we're gonna see duff's over there He's hunting around that 60 Cadillac. He says, we got to get that engine out. We got to put that in a cooler 60 Cadillac. So, oh yeah. And we got late model LS plow trucks and service trucks put together. We got work to do. So thank you very much. Remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done. So long as you are having fun. And anytime you can haul home a crusty old 34.5 International short bed half ton with your crew cab dually schlong box powered by an LS, overdrive, AC. That's fun. All right, on to the next one. Apparently, chin isn't working today. Daisy does love you. He did some modifications because he was going to go do goo 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 goo